Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is the fourth and the final lecture for the theoretical basic concepts that anyone needs before start using the computational chemistry software. Many of people actually start using the computational chemistry software without having any such of basic knowledge. That's not good. To understand what's going out, you need at least to know some basic concepts. In these four lectures, and this is the fourth one, we are covering the basic concepts that you need before start using the computational chemistry software. In this lecture, we are speaking about what's called the type of calculation. What's meant by this in a simple way is what do you want the software to do? What do you want software to calculate? Before to proceed about type, different type of calculations, let's have a look at this potential energy surface. If we put the energy in, any axis, let's say the z, z, z axis, and given the x axis and y axis, some other reaction coordinate. What is the reaction coordinate? Reaction coordinate, some kind of a variables, or because we in for any molecule, we have three n minus six coordinates, or degree of freedom. For example, if we have four atoms, n is a number of atoms, four multiplied by three is 12 minus six is six, means in, if we have four atoms, we have six degree of freedoms or six coordinate to change which is either some kind of bond lenses, bond angles, dihedral angles, among these four atoms. For our cases, if we have, for like example, two reaction coordinates or whatever, and the energy on this axis, we can change uh, these two coordinates and get different energies. The one with minimum energy is called optimized geometry, and one with the maximum usually is called as transition state. This is a very rough picture, but we will go in details more on later. So we can say that some calculation are asking the molecule to change in geometry. So some runs are resulting in the molecule will change its geometry. This usually are four type of calculation. One is the geometry optimization. Second is transition state search. Third is the IRC intrinsic reaction coordinate. And fourth is the potential energy scale. So what's the difference between these four type of calculations that ask us ask the program to change its geometry or structure and show us the energy. So the first one to explain it, it's very easy. Assume a very simple reaction coordinate and this is the energy. Assume that we have some kind of surface like this. So as you change a coordinate, the energy changes something like this. If we start with this geometry and we ask the program to do a geometry optimization, that's mean we are asking the program to lower the energy of the molecule to change the geometry and search for the lowest energy. So finally, it will stop like here and found some kind of a minimum. If we start from this point and asking for a geometry optimization, it will proceed until it reach up to the same point. So, but if we start from here and asking for geometry optimization, you see, it will end up in a different position. So different position might result from different starting points. So if we start from here or from here, we will end up here. If we start from here or from here, we will end up here because we are asking the program to change the geometry and search for the minimum energy. So we call this process as geometry optimization. Since we can get different optimized geometry from different starting points, the one with the lowest energy is called the global minimum while all the others are called local minima. So there are many, many local minimums. The lowest in energy among them is the global minimum. In the opposite case, if you ask the program to change the geometry to find the highest possible energy, this is called the transition, transition state search. If you start from this point and asking the program to do transition state search, it will try to change geometry, but in this way to change energy to higher values. So it will move up and stop on the top of this, and it is a transition state. Or you start from here, it will go up and end in the same transition state. But if you start from here, and you ask the program to do a transition state search, the energy will go up forever. This means it will result in error. Nothing is found. Same case, if you start here, it might end up of breaking molecule or whatever. It might not find a transition state. So the same case, if you select the wrong starting geometry, you might not result in a transition state or you might result in error. 
because you are asking a program to increase the energy, it will try to increase energy, trying to find what's called a stationary points. Stationary points is the point where delta E by delta coordinate is equal to zero. As you can see, the slope here is equal to zero. The slope here is equal to zero. The slope here is equal to zero. So for the global minimum, local minimum, and the maximum, which is the transition state, the slope is equal to zero. This is called the stationary points. So geometry optimization and transition state are searching for stationary points. Where geometry optimization search for minimum energy, transition state doing the opposite and searching for the maximum energy. The other two runs, which IRC and potential energy surface, are just changing geometry and measuring energy. So this run that we see right now is kind of a potential energy surface because you change the geometry and asking the program to draw the energy as a function of different geometry. This is called potential energy surface. If you do the same for the transition state, it's called IRC. So the third and fourth is just you change one of the geometrical parameter asking the program to do a curve like this, where you change the geometry and asking the program to draw the energy. You don't ask the program to find what is the minimum, what is the maximum, just to draw the energy as a function of one of the reaction coordinates. The same case for the transition state. If this geometry is the transition state and you ask the program to do a potential energy surface for transition state, this is a special type of potential energy surface. It's called IRC where it uses the imaginary frequency found in the transition state as a, as a coordinate, as an intrinsic coordinate, changing the geometry from this transition to the reactant and to the product to see the energy of the reactant and the product and see the curvature of the reaction. Is it forward or backward? Which, which curvature, which reaction? You know, you more get more details about the reaction coordinate for the transition state. This is all the type of geometry the runs that change geometry. After you do a geometry optimization, of course, if you want to measure some kind of a specific properties for molecule, you better find the global minimum to measure the spectra and in any of the properties that you want to study for the molecule is here. But if you want to study the rate of reaction, you need to find the transition state. So global minimum is the best point or the point that we used for drawing the spectra and getting the you know, uh, charge and whatever criteria for the molecule. And while you can compare with the energy of the local minimum relative to the global minimum and see the energy difference, and you can also estimate the transition state between these two minimums if it's found. So you can do, after geometry optimization, you can do some kind of another calculation that doesn't ask the program to change the geometry. This is called a single point. Single point calculation is a calculation with a fixed geometry. The geometry will not change. But you are asking the program to do something else rather than changing geometry, such as doing a frequency calculation or electronic absorption spectra, which is either for the valency electron using TDDFT or any selected molecule, even core electron like CAS, complete active space, self-consistent field, or doing NMR spectra, or doing some simple calculation like charge and bond order and whatever. So there are many, many type of calculation to ask the program, but to get this spectra in a very good way, you have first to do a geometry optimization to get the local minimum. The frequency calculation is a very special type of this calculation because the frequency calculation doesn't give us just the, some spectra. It gives us actually three stuffs. The first, it is used to check the optimization and the transition state itself. As we will see later, if the optimized geometry has an imaginary frequency, it is wrong. If the transition state has more than one imaginary frequency, it is not correct. So it can use to check the optimization. If the optimized geometry has one imaginary frequency or more, this is not a correct optimized structure. If the transition state has one imaginary frequency, that's correct. If it has more than one imaginary frequency, this is not correct. The second point is used to calculate the thermodynamic parameter. Automatically, any frequency calculation will provide you with enthalpy, entropy, and free energy. So it's just correcting the total energy to get the thermodynamic parameter using some kind of statistical thermodynamics. You don't have to care about these details right now. So it's just used to get the thermodynamic parameter of the material. It also can simulate the IR or the Raman or both of them spectra. 
As you can know that the IR or the Raman spectra, the IR actually in the Raman are depending on the variables of nucleus that we said before, which is three n minus six variables or variables that you have, which is three minus six degree of freedom. In each of these degree of freedom, you can apply the vibrational equations and you can get a spectra, which is something like this for simple harmonic oscillator or something like this for an harmonic oscillator where energy levels are distributed from you know, vibration and energy level among the electronic transition. We will not go in much details about this, but we are very interested in what? If this is a vibration and energy level, the first very vibration energy level is not zero. It is somewhere here where the optimized geometry is here. So there are some energy difference because the first vibration energy level is not here, it's here. The difference between what's what we found with the vibration and the, the real one with the vibration is called zero point energy correction because the real energy of the molecule, the molecule is vibrating even in the, you know, in the ground vibrational energy level. So its energy is not exactly as here, but actually as here. So this is the zero, zero point energy correction. This is the energy levels of the vibration energy level. You don't have to care about them, but of course, they are you know, equally separated with energy. Any vibrational energy level does what? It increases the energy of the molecule. As you can see, if you go to second vibrational energy level, third vibrational energy level, the energy increase because this axis is the energy and this axis is the geometry as we used to show. So the transitions can be from zero to one. This is called fundamental transition. And the difference, as we saw before, is the zero point energy. Suppose that the vibration energy level is not like this. Suppose the curvature is opposite like this. In this case, any vibration will result in what? It will result in decreasing of the energy rather than increasing of the energy. This is happens in what? Happens in some things like transition state. So if you found any imaginary frequency or negative frequency, that means the vibrational curvature is inverted like this. So imaginary frequency means that the curvature is inverted and it's not like this because here the energy increase with vibration, here the energy decrease with vibration. This is called imaginary or negative frequency. So if we have a potential energy curve like this, and if this is the one minimum and this is another minimum, if you can see this minimum has the energy curvature is up and the energy curvature is up, this is the minimum energy because as you go vibrationally in any direction, the energy will increase. This is a minimum. And there is another minimum on the other side, but between these two minimums, you can move from here to there, and there are some other points. So is this is a transition state or this is a transition state? This point, as you can see, if you move in this direction, the energy increase, which means a normal vibrational energy level. But if you move on the other way in this direction, the energy decrease, which means an, in one imaginary, frequency. Here you have all the vibrational energy level positive except one. One imaginary frequency only is actually what's called saddle point. Saddle point is the real transition state because molecules will not go from here to here and to here. No, molecule will move from here to this point to that other minimum. So this point is the saddle point is the real transition state. It has one imaginary frequency as we see. On the other hand, these two peaks are not a saddle, not a saddle point, nor a real transition state, because trans real transition state, as we will learn from here, is the one which has one imaginary frequency, which is the saddle point. The other point, which is here, if you move in this direction, in this vibrational level, you know, as you see the curvature, the energy goes down, which means one imaginary frequency. If you move on the other one from this side to this side, also energy increase means second imaginary frequency. So here you have two imaginary frequency. This is not a transition state. This is something else. So if you found more than one imaginary frequency, this is not considered as one transition state, but something else. Thank you for listening. This is the end of today's lecture and the theoretical part. Let's meet on the next part where we explain the computational programs using some kind of a special software that make it more easy for you to make the input and analyze the result at the same time. It's called Wave more. Thank you, and we'll meet in the next lecture. Hope you enjoyed.